Greetings and welcome to Valo U. I'm Zaladrith and I'll be your instructor for today. Today's class is Tactics 121, Shield and Sword, Breaking Sightlines. The location you're aimed at with your crosshair placement is considered your sword. You should be ready to fight any opponent that comes from that direction. After all, the best defense is a good offense. Dead enemies can't threaten you. As an optimization, you could also position your cover such that if you're feeling overwhelmed, you can just take one step and have cover from your sword angle. Now, shield in this case means using walls, objects, visual obstructions, or teammate-controlled area to defend against all other angles that enemies can approach from. When positioned properly, enemies should only be able to appear from the direction of your sword, and enemies entering your shielded areas should either have to make noise or be noticed by teammates, giving you time to respond to the new threat. You know that feeling like you're being watched? Try to imagine that feeling coming from every entrance of the area that you're in that doesn't have a teammate guarding it. Except instead of just being watched, you're being watched by a gun. Whenever you feel that threat from somewhere, but your sword is already preoccupied, try to use the cover and walls near you to step into cover to break the sightline. Since it's impossible to take space in a new area without exposing yourself to new sightlines, you'll need to try to minimize the time that you're unshielded, and gamble on leaving the least likely sightlines unprotected. In this clip, the round has just begun, so the only entrance that threatens me is a main. Once I see KO cross and hear Raze's blast pack onto site, however, it's now possible for enemies to push either side of U-Haul. Since I only have one sword, and there's no way to shield the other entrance for any length of time while my sword is preoccupied, I instinctively try to leave as fast as possible. Conveniently, I also wanted to double up with my raise and actually arrive in time to force a 2v1. Now, since I don't hear anything in U-Haul, and the enemy omen smoke is covering the more dangerous showers entrance, the only danger is if someone pushes truck or triple boxes, so I gamble that I have enough time to reload since I don't hear any running footsteps. When I see the omen cross triple, I decide to try to 2v1 him, as I still don't hear any steps from U-Haul or close on truck. I use truck to shield me from the most dangerous showers entrance, and the wall to my right to buy me a few seconds if someone is shift walking through U-Haul. At this point though, the attackers have had a lot of time to scale up onto the site, so I start to feel worried about all the possible angles. With my growing fear of wide open spaces, I decide to try to take U-Haul to break all the sightlines at once and attempt to isolate duels since I know that one of their players still has to be out on site planting. Here, notice how I keep close to the wall behind me so that I don't get exposed to A-Main at all. A-Main has a lot of cover and thus is more likely to conceal another enemy. The Sage Wall here actually makes it impossible for me to get attacked from A-Main, so I don't need to worry about shielding myself from that side for a while. I can just direct my sword through the gap. And here notice how I'm fully shielded on all sides before reloading. Now, I start feeling antsy while I'm killing KO, since so much time has passed that someone could have shift walked into U-Haul by now, so it's time to leave. Notice here how I carefully watch this gap until I'm fully shielded from it by entering U-Haul. Here, perhaps I give the enemy too much credit, as if they were playing to the limits of where they possibly could be, the best spot to hold me in U-Haul is this specific lurk angle, but that's a topic for another class. Anyway, as I go around truck, I distinctly hear two different sets of footsteps from the other side of the truck. So now I know that every angle except the double box and main is clear, since U-Haul is walled off and I'm watching the shower side. Now I pre-fire the double box as I pass, since it's the closest of the two to the footsteps, but I think they got scared to throw like KO did, when he gave me a free 1v1 in such an impossible 1v3 scenario. My crosshair placement absentmindedly floats a bit into the wall as I look down at the corner of my screen to see where the spike was planted, since I find it unlikely for them to peek me before I tap spike. I know that I need to gamble here since I'm low on time, and decide to gamble that at least one player is behind double stacks since the footsteps were so recent, and that it would be a stronger double peek if one enemy was main and one was double box. If I shift walked forward to check double box though, there would be an angle from the right side of A main that I would be unshielded from, so I decide to gamble that there's an enemy in that specific location as well. To protect against that right side of A main angle, I shift walk to my right, trying to move towards the wall, but accidentally bump into an obstruction. When I hear a jump on the A main boxes, however, I realize that my prediction was wrong, and I reflexively pre-fire it. After not seeing anyone though, I realize it's just a distraction and flick back in time to fight Sage, as I only have one sword to direct. Then I immediately dash left, since I know the A main box player will have an angle on me if they're trying to trade, and dashing left gives me a tiny bit of cover from the corner, which buys just enough time for me to reset the fight and beat him fairly. In hindsight, I could have smoked spike and tapped it to force them out of cover, or smoked main while pushing double box, or dashed closer to the chamber to ensure I could force a fight, or all other kinds of better options, but each have their respective risks. I took a gamble, and I committed to it. In summary, shield and sword is a way of visualizing and dealing with enemy sightlines. Your sword is the direction that you commit to fighting enemies. All other dangerous angles that aren't guarded by teammates should be shielded by cover. If it's impossible to shield all those angles, then you need to minimize time that you're exposed by breaking sightlines as soon as possible. 
That's all for today's lesson. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the lecturer or the TAs in the comments below. Thanks for attending, and we hope you enjoy your stay here at Valo U.